Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today, we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So sit back, relax, and before we fully jump on into this video, I do just want to ask you guys to please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely, and of course, you guys already know that I always appreciate it. And if you do find any of the information in this video valuable, useful, or interesting, or in any sort of way, definitely hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on to never miss a future update. So I always talk about XRP's value in a sense on the market that it's disrupting. And a lot of people kind of say, hey, that's not really the right way to do it. You know, don't don't go off of that. It's a little bit speculative. Well, let's actually talk about a different story today. Okay. In this market, when we're talking about crypto being at X amount of dollars in global crypto market cap, right? And then we look at, and, you know, at Bitcoin, Ethereum, this, that, and we look at their dominance levels. Okay, dominance is the percentage of market share that it has over the entire crypto market, aka, you know, Bitcoin makes up for 41.12% of the market valuation currently. Same with like XRP, right? XRP is making up, you know, only one point, roughly almost 1.7% of the market share. Now, when we are talking about what is happening in this market, I always like to say, and I always like to address, first off, that a lot of these dollar figures that we talk about for XRP and, you know, a lot of the blown out proportions in terms of uh, you know, market valuations for XRP and, you know, where it could pretty much go in the future. I just want you all to understand that a lot of these prices that people are saying on a day-to-day -day basis does not mean anything. You need to look at, first off, the technology behind XRP. You need to understand the markets that they're going after. And then you kind of can pinpoint where it could go in the future. But what about if we didn't do that? What about if we just went off of crypto evaluations and future, you know, sort of predictions alone and went from there? Well, that's what we're going to be doing today. So first off, I want to show you guys real quick what, you know, Ripple is going after. This is sort of the fundamental standpoint, what what the market share they're kind of trying to disrupt. So first off, here's Nostro Vostro accounts, which make up $27 trillion. Um, and then, of course, we do see, you know, change of scale, $27 trillion equals just one of these. This is the global transfer market, SWIFT, Fedwire, Chips, Western Union, MoneyGram, TransferWise, payments, all of that. $2.7 quadrillion in market valuation. Uh, this is the derivatives market, essentially, if you will. And uh, we also see SWIFT, you know, $5 trillion a day, global non-cash transactions, $577 billion, Western Union, $80 billion, XRP market cap, $30 billion. Now, I want you to all understand that when we are talking about something like this, the idea that XRP is going to go after, you know, just a $2.7 quadrillion market and pretty much have that entire market share value under its belt is illogical. The percentage of that actually happening is very slim to none. I would say it's almost unrealistic. Um, but we are seeing a lot of things happening within this space. We're seeing a lot of updates within XRP. Now, I'm going to break down percentage fractals and how we get to X amount of dollars here shortly. I do want to address real quick a few things. So first off, I said, this goes back to November, by the way. I have two tweets from myself going back to November. I said, in the last three months, Ripple has introduced the liquidity hub, created their own regulatory framework, announced the CBDC launch on the XRP ledger, announced Digital Pound Foundation involvement, increased ODL deployment in the Middle East. Do you see it? And the reason why I say this and the reason why I bring this stuff up is because we even go back here, right? I, I, again, I said 2022 is the year that everything pretty much changes. You know, Liquidity Hub launches in 2022. ISO 2022 goes live in November of 2022. Multiple uh, CBDC and updates slash trialing goes live in 2022. Ripple CEO expects a settlement for XRP in 2022. X 2022 is the year it all changes, especially for XRP. Now, the reason why I bring these up and the reason why I talk about this is because we have so much to look forward to. Development is continuing to ramp up. ODL adoption is happening. Things are moving very fast. We go back to October 15th of 2021 from Ripple themselves saying, you know, what's real about crypto? They're talking about me, XRP and Ripple really kind of addressing the fact that XRP is used for hundreds of solutions. But Ripple uses XRP because compared to other crypto alternatives, it's fast, efficient, reliable and carbon neutral. And it seamlessly supports our customers compliance re uh, requirements. Now, I want you to all understand that XRP is not just used for payments. It has massive amounts of use cases behind it. 
But this is all talking about pretty much the real business impact, real compliance solutions, real sustainability, innovations, pretty much breaking down everything that's real about crypto. But the one thing that I really want to focus on here is the idea of fast, efficient, reliable, and carbon neutral, pretty much payments, if you will, uh, in a sense on what it really kind of is doing for the partners of Ripple. You know, Ripple is far from the only company using crypto. We do see businesses, everything pretty much ramping up with this. Uh, we're seeing, you know, companies like Microsoft, Visa, PayPal, etc. Uh, Ripple's payment technology leverages XRP to enable businesses to free working capital and they can, you know, then invest in their growth. And the best part about this is this kind of goes back into this, right? This, these Nostro Vajra accounts, $27 trillion just sitting idle there. You know, working capital is a big, a big deal, but also liquidity is also a huge deal. From my standpoint, when we are talking about you know, Ripple and what they're really kind of focused on with XRP. I, I, I truly do believe XRP is going to be a huge use case value for a lot of companies, not just Ripple themselves as well, because we're going to see companies like banking companies, financial companies, all utilizing this technology, which is going to be huge. And I'm not saying that from a speculative standpoint either. We are already seeing that happening on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, in terms of the cross-border payment scene that they are disrupting, we know that this is a $150 trillion market easily, $156 trillion in 2022. A huge market, tons of volume, tons of value as well. Uh, and, and I truly do think that we are going to see a lot more uh, disruptions happening within this market as well, which I'm very excited about. But all of this leads me back to one thing. How does XRP get to an evaluation of, you know, $100, $200, $300, $500, $1,000, etc.? Okay, so let's look back on January 8th. Ex Goldman Sachs executive predicts crypto market cap reaching $250 trillion within the decade. Okay, and this comes from Raul Paul, uh, incredible individual, but we're talking about like a $250 trillion market valuation for all of crypto. And uh, of course, this is taken into accountability almost every single altcoin in this market right now. Uh, regulations are coming into place. We don't know exactly the market share value that XRP will have in a $250 trillion market. Um, but let's actually look at this, right? So right now, XRP has a market share value of 1.7%. Go back to this uh, overall calculator here. So 1.7%. Calculate this. So this will be our market share value if we are pretty much st uh, still sitting at dominance factors right now when the market cap for crypto is $250 trillion. I'm going to go over here and let's... Uh, put this in. So we'd be at about $88.85 or 146x from our current prices. Pretty good, right? You might be wondering, well, yeah, that's pretty good, but this is in a decade. Okay, well, let's look back on time, right? XRP dominance. So going as far back as November of 2020, we were sitting at about 5% in market share value, but let's actually go to our mean, right? Let's go to where we were pretty much kind of sitting stable throughout the year of 2021. Let's actually kind of look at this. So when we're talking about where we were kind of positioned at before this breakdown, uh, we were sitting at about almost 2% exact. Uh, of course, there's completely different dominance factors that lead into this as well. Like for example, if we go back, you know, to as far as like 2019 and stuff, we're seeing like, you know, double digit figures. We're even seeing, you know, 24% all the way up to you know, 31%. But let's go off of 24.73% for the sake of this video and really to give you guys, you know, a market share value on what that would be. So 24.7% I'm going off of. Uh, so 24.7% because we've got to remember that there's still going to be bull runs and stuff like that happening. And who knows, by 2030, because we're talking about like 10 years from now, you know, this this utility market that we've always been addressing and talking about could change everything for uh, for, you know, XRP. I mean, this is talking about a massive amount of capital, okay? This is $61.8 trillion in market valuation for XRP. We're talking about a 2,137x to $1,290. A pretty big stretch. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying things could happen like crazy, especially if we are in a utility-driven market. But in my mind, the mean here for us is about 4%, Okay. We'll go off of 4% because it is more of a logical standpoint. And it's really something that is more of a, you know, pretty much nice idea to go off of in terms of a price valuation. It's a small figure number as well. $10 trillion. We'd be sitting at about $209, roughly a 345X, which I think is logical. And I think that is more so 
extremely possible within the decade, especially if we're talking about XRP adoption, XRP use continuing to happen day by day by day. Uh, I have seen some crazy dollar figures. I've been, I've been seeing, you know, a ton of predictions happening for XRP where, you know, people have said $30,000, $40,000, $50,000. But I'm telling you right now, okay, we need to understand where crypto is going. Okay, so first off, if we are talking about $250 trillion uh, for this entire market, are we going to still be seeing Bitcoin, you know, holding a 60% market share? Because the, to me, that's something that is pretty significant because at 60%, okay, because we know that that is at like the height of like the bear market, right? I mean, the number here, the figures are extremely higher. I mean, this is like, you know, something that's almost unlogical, if you will. But if we're talking about, you know, just save or so at our current valuation, we're talking more so about like 41%. Sorry, I did not mean to go there. You know, we're, we're expecting Bitcoin to essentially have a massive market share value over this, uh, which would pretty much be around like, it's over like $100 trillion. I don't think that that is logical in a sense. Okay, I, I think when we're talking about first off the future of the space, we're going to see a lot of utility gems in the top 10. I honestly don't see Bitcoin being the main show, uh, you know, in, in terms of where Bitcoin is positioned in the market share value. You know, we might see Bitcoin at number five, at number 10. We don't know. We can't speculate that too much. I'm not going to try to speculate that too much. All I know is that if we're talking about XRP being, you know, 5% market share value of this, 4%, 5% around that area, because we know that dominance is something that jumps around like crazy. Uh, you could pretty much see the spikes here. You could see, you know, us going as high as like 6%, uh, you know, ranging around like 5% for a little bit of time before we broke down. You know, dominance moves here and there. Market share value will fluctuate all day long. Um, but in a sense, on this market share value, uh, this will pretty much push, and sorry, I didn't even copy that. Uh, this could really push the value of XRP up even higher uh, to like about $261. You know, everybody kind of stresses the idea that it would have a $12.5 trillion market share value at that point. But understand that crypto adoption is not slowing down. Crypto is becoming bigger every single day. This $250 trillion uh, prediction on the crypto market cap by you know, 2030, if you will, is a fairly high stretch stretch of the, you know, price. But I do believe that it is actually something that is logical, especially as we are seeing more companies moving in on crypto, similar to like in the 90s when, you know, major corporations were moving in on big tech. I think that we're pretty much seeing the same thing happening here. But, you know, it, even if maybe we don't get to $250 trillion, maybe we get to just $50 trillion in the next decade, you know, we're still seeing a, a pretty nice figure number for XRP. Not as much as you as you all would like, um, but we got to take this one day at a time and understand that this is a process, okay? And do I think that XRP could hit $2.5 trillion this year, next year, you know, 2025 in, you know, market cap? 100%. I think that XRP could easily hit $50 with the SEC lawsuit being pretty much settled. Um, but I'm just saying, off of these percentage figures, you, we got to understand that where is crypto going? What is the market share value of crypto going to be by the end of this year? Honestly, I've always said like seven to ten trillion dollars could happen if we do have a massive inflow of money. But it does have to take the idea of institutional money flowing in as well. Um, you know, I'm more so of a long-term visionary on XRP, if you will. Uh, I, I kind of look at crypto as being a massive opportunity for a lot of individuals. I don't see this not being $100 trillion by 2030 in my mind, especially with everything that's been happening this year alone. Um, we just know that if we're talking about XRP getting to $100 to $200 to $3,000, $10,000, like you got to understand that those numbers are a little bit of a stretch. Like, you know, you, you got to realize that, don't get me wrong, the value behind XRP is great. Like, I, I think that it's incredible. I think that we're going to see a lot of price movement for XRP. I think that the adoption for XRP is going to be incredible as well. Um, but in terms of the market share value, you know, I could easily see XRP being 10% of market share valuation for crypto. We're talking about $250 trillion. I would say that this is actually a fairly nice um, overall price appreciation to go off of. This will pretty much give us our most logical sense of idea on the price per XRP. This is pretty much what you could look forward to.
$25 trillion in market cap, $522.66, an upside of 865x. The reason why I go off of this and the reason why I'm saying this is like, you know, you got to understand that 10% market share value is such a min minuscule percentage figure. I know that it's one tenth of the market share value, but you got to understand that, you know, even in, in the sense of this market right now, you know, a lot of the dominance is ranging behind Bitcoin and Ethereum. You know, like Ethereum right now almost has 20% market share value. You know, in my mind, I don't think that Ethereum and Bitcoin are going to be the main stars of the show around this time that we're talking about, like by 2030. I think that it's going to be extremely different, especially once regulations are in place. Um, I, I do see, you know, crypto being adopted at mass scale, and I do see XRP having at least 10% market share value just from the overall use cases behind it and the value behind it. And the same goes for a lot of utility gems. Like, I'm not taking anything away from them. I think that the top 10 uh, crypto assets will, you know, pretty much, you know, drop in, in percentage figures as they go down the list. But I think the ones at the top are going to have a lot of percentage valuation in them. And of course, percentages will fluctuate. You know, it will start with like number one having maybe 60%, you know, dominance drop into 40%, 30%, 20%, similar to what even Bitcoin does right now in terms of dominance. And I can really kind of show you guys that real quick on the chart. So, you know, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. You know, if we're talking about, you know, going as far back as like 2017, 2018, because uh, we don't have the price data going back to 2013, 2014, uh, you can pretty much see where we are, right? Like, we, we started in 2017 being like around 96% market dominance. This has dropped exponentially, right? You know, we came down to like 35.5%, continued to rise. Our high was about 74%. And this is going to continue to drop as time goes on. So like by 2030, what will the dominance, the true dominance of Bitcoin really be? I, I honestly think it's going to be a minuscule number. And I think that that's where we're going to see a lot of utility gems having a ton of dominance over this market, allowing for a lot more price appreciation for a lot of these assets. But with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. Sorry, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.